ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Echo. We are back on the game for part two. I really liked the how the first part went, and I really am starting to like this as a novel, so we're going to check it out. It was really interesting, last video. So, uh, grab my second phone. Alright, we're going to continue from here. Five minutes later, Cole still misses to the point where he's able to get up and leave. At this point, I'm completely wiped out and I just want to sit down. I point out the first stage we see, and they agree. I sigh gratefully when I sit down. You look tired as shit. I crack an eye open to see Carl giving me a sidelong glance. I don't sleep very well in motel beds. I actually woke up around two. You we were gone. And now TJ's looking at me too, and I feel my gut clench for a second. Yeah, I tried to go for a walk down the street, hope it would, hope it would help me get tired. Uh oh, I don't know what. Sorry about that, guys. Hmm. What well, that happens again? You go always walk over to my house. I'm up until like three every night. Wow. Why? Carl shrugs, leaning back, sticking his hooves up against the chair in front of him, earning himself a dirty glance from his occu... occu... Penier. Games, mostly. Sometimes I read. Paul rubs his chin, opening his muzzle and closing it, then opening it again. <sighs> you know, it would be pretty cool if you spend the night one of these days. That house can be creepy as hell when you're the only one in it. You're alone? Yeah, parents are vacationing in the regal paradise, having a bloody good time, they tell me. Carl tries to put on an accent, but it doesn't do a very good job of it. Oh, did you want to go with them? Carl blows raspberries laughing. <laughs> Not really. Mom told me right away that weed isn't legal there. So I took that as them not wanting me to come along. Of course, dude always needs his, uh, his special lettuce. Oh. He did say that the chocolate bear is real, whatever it means, and that they bring me some. Guess I'm not enough of a fat ass yet. Come on, Carl. But dude, I'm getting there. Soon, all I have to do is stand in front of the mirror, block out my face, and Oh. <laughs> oh. I made a jump snorting, croaking sound, and I can feel TJ look at the two of us disapprovingly. <laughs> TJ. Not the hardest thing to do when you're hot. Wait, so you actually done it? Carl shrugged, smirking at me. I reached out and grabbed his chest. From what I could tell, there's a pretty firm set of pecs under there. Carl puts a mock horrified look on his face. Sexual soul, he's touching my breasts. <laughs> no, whatever, Carl. They're harder than mine. So now we're teenage girls in the locker room comparing racks. Hey, you're the one that brought up tits. You know what? I can see it, yeah. You're the hot preppy one everyone likes. I'm the big fat chick you're all nice to, but Call Big Thunder Mountain behind her back. And TJ... TJ hadn't been paying attention, distracted by watching some dancers on the stage. He looks innocently at us. Huh? You're the cute, naive Christian chick that only takes up... takes it up the butt so you can stay a virgin. What? <laughs> let me feel your... Let me feel your... <laughs> what, dude? It's not even five minutes into the recording. Bro, I'm at like four and a half minutes. It's not even. <laughs> Look at his face. Oh my god. Let me feel your boobs. How would I compare? <laughs> what in the world are you talking? No! Small but perky. After a few seconds of tussling and Carl getting smacked in the nose by TJ, someone shushes us from behind and we're forced to silence. The show starts off with a bunch of mice having weird sort of hoedown. TJ's really into it and actually starts clapping along. 
A smile. Chicha could definitely be kind of cute sometimes. Carl just rubs his nose and leans back, watching with a smirk. <laughs> as if this whole thing is a joke to him. <laughs> his face, I just realized. <laughs> Look at his face. At this point, my eyelids are feeling really heavy. At most, I got in maybe four hours of sleep last night. Yeah, probably because of the nightmare you had. Thinking about leaning my head back and the bucks of the sea are pretty... But the bucks of the sea are pretty low, and I just end up with my head hanging over the back. Leaning forward would just be impossible. I could lean onto one of my friends. I don't think they mind. Lean onto Carl, lean onto TJ. Leon to Carl, Leon to TJ. TJ, I don't think we would want to be leaning on our best friend, TJ. Carl's also our best friend, but like if we take a look at Carl, he's more soft, he's more plush, so we're going to lean on Carl. Carl's definitely a better choice. Megaran, probably softer. He'd make a nice pillow. Carl, I'm going to use you as the bed. Huh? Oh? Put my head on his shoulder and close my eyes, feeling the soft puffy, sleeveless hoodie, and his bulk under my cheek. Really enough, he was pretty damn sturdy, and I had expected him to feel like a pillow puff. Damn, Chasey, that's hard, huh? Mm hmm. Oh, all right then. I feel him shift, and suddenly he's pulling an arm across the bed. The bench giving me more support. The gesture makes me feel a little warm, and I can feel TJ's eyes on us, but I ignore him, enjoying the position of intimacy. The sounds of the clapping and fiddle start drifting away as he as the lack of sleep takes its toll. Ooh. Ooh, I did not like that sound. I do not like this. I feel along the rough edges of rock and dirt. The only thing I hear is a shower of debris I'm knocking onto the ground. The air is they are still, and I have the vague feeling that I'm suffocating. I keep going. I'm going to reach the end eventually. I just have to keep moving. I can tell I'm going down deeper and deeper. The space around me is growing smaller and smaller, and soon I'm hutching. I'm hutching so that my head doesn't scrape the ceiling. I can hear footsteps, not quite synchronically with my own. There aren't any kind of footsteps that I've heard before, though. I stop and listen. There's definitely the sound of feet, but not like they're walking. It's like they're stamping down on the ground, making as much noise as possible. This is accompanied by the slapping sound, as if someone was smacking their paws on the ground as well. Imagine a canine toddler still insisting on walking on all fours while throwing a tantrum. It's heavier, it's heavier though, like an adult is doing it. I imagine the nape of my neck burkle, but I'm not scared. It's not long after I stop that the noise as well. Just 10 feet behind me, I turn, watching in darkness. I knew you'd come back. They'd always do. My voice sounds clogged, muted, like the rocky walls are just sucking up the sound instead of bouncing them down the tunnel. The stamping starts up again, loudly, coming towards me at full speed. Now I can hear sobbing, sniff, sniffling, and strange gut, guttural grunting. It's just feet away. You're only moving in circles. It veers away just as the words leave my mouth, going back the way it came. I stand there for a while, listening until I can't hear anymore. I turn and continue on, feeling the walls again, as I make my way lower and lower. The smell hits me right as my paws hit it. Slick, slippery, blood coats the walls, and my paw runs along the, like thick oil. It's warm and fresh, and now I know I'm getting close. A voice abruptly echoes down the hallway. It's not far away at all. I knew you'd come back. They always do. Make my way closer and closer. Fear prick now. Now fear pricks my heart. They always do. You hear muffled screams now. Someone was yelling with their mouth closed. Now the fur is standing up all over my body, but I won't stop. But my feet won't stop. I keep going, getting closer and closer. You're only moving in circles. 
Oh, it's repeating what... I'm here. It's right here in front of me. And now I'm reaching out of it. Reaching out to touch it. I can't stop. I can't stop. <gasps> the jump in my head jerks and my eyes snap open. Looking around wildly. It's like I came up from being underwater too long. Shit. Whoa. Each and Carl both jump shortly after I do. I look back and forth as they stare wide-eyed back at me. It takes me a second to realize I'm still at the Southwest Adventures at the stage watching shows. Jesus fuck, dude. Are you alright? Carl. I lean forward and rub my face and my paws. Trying to stop shaking. I'm fine. I'm fine. Just a really bad dream. I feel a small paw on my back as TJ rubs it. What about? I, uh, I'm not really sure. It's just a really dark place and some things were there. Uh, huh, that does sound pretty creepy. What kinds of things? I think for a minute. The weird crawling thing, the screaming thing, I pull my head up looking towards the stage, which is pretty empty. It, it doesn't matter, it was just a dream. Hey, what happened to the show? Carl chuckles next to me, leaning back again. <laughs> you missed them, dude. We've seen like three shows. Three? Yeah, even they had a segment with otters doing water tricks. We thought about waking you up for it, but you were in a really deep sleep. That's too bad. I always love seeing my people laugh at for swimming clowns we are. How long it's been? Carl checks his phone, which he already has out. Been about three hours. You'll probably get some lunch now. Damn, I've been out for a while. I'm surprised I hadn't at least woken up a few times considering the uncomfortable position I'd been in. I guess you feel better then? Yeah, I'm feeling better for the... Yeah, yeah, I've been feeling better for the past two hours. Now I'm hungry. Of course you are. It's already 2 p.m. and I've composed myself to the most part, so I'll take out my phone to text Leo. Uh... Uh, hungry, we should meet back up. He gets back. Jesus, this is a really like <laughs> really detailed hand. Looks really good though. Like, damn. You take this. It's gonna be pretty quickly. Okay, mostly done with the rides anyway. Me at food. Me at food cart. We meet Flynn at the table in the food court where he's already brought some pizza. Carl immediately sits down and pries open the box, taking out a few slices. Ugh, of course. You guys had fun? It was alright. Watched a few shows of our own state species history. Chase took a nap. Then's I, it's TJ, who doesn't say anything as he sits down to take out his own slice of pizza. A bit more daintly than... Daint, daintly than Carl had. Feeling better, TJ? Yeah, I'm fine. TJ nibbles on a slice of cheese pizza. Yeah, well, the pizza here is a hell of a lot scarier than any of the rides, so you're braver than I am. Wait, <laughs> where's Leo and Jenna? Flynn rolls his eyes and nods towards a row of carnival games to the right of the court. Fighting. They've been, they've been playing those games for a fucking half hour already. I'm not surprised. I got my own slice of pizza and a napkin, made my way over there. Keeping with them of the old, keeping with the theme of the old west, the carnival section head of the park is decked out with fake saloons and brothels. I spot them pretty quickly. Leo's holding a pink unicorn, and Jenna's carrying a green dragon. They seem to be pretty good spirits, though Leo's grinning a little tight. Looks like a looks like a pretty successful haul, you guys. Hey, Jace. Jenna's grinning looks a little smug as well. You guys finished? We're eating now. Leo shifts the giant unicorn around. Yeah, I'm pretty much done, I think. Damn, Leo, you must have won something pretty hard to get that. Um... Yeah, that was me. I look over at the green dragon Jenna's holding. What's about that? Yeah, I won this too. Oh, uh, well, I'm sure you've won a couple. Uh, actually... Yeah, I've... Beating him at every game. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, you're visiting. I want your memories of this vacation to be good. 
Obviously, it's getting your to your head, though. Oh, please. Chase, you should have seen his face. Sour grapes the whole time. Oh, really? I would have usually stayed out of stuff like this. Leo's always got a little carried away when it came to competition, especially when I was around. But it was kind of funny seeing him act like this. Let's just go eat. Wait, there's a high... There's a high striker. Why don't we show Chase who's stronger, huh? Leo contempts for that for a second, but it seems pretty confident about this one. He's, li he's literally almost twice the size of Jenna. I don't know if that's very fair to you, Jenna. I mean, he lets that say, and honestly, I have to agree. Jenna, though, she gets a little fox gleam in her eyes that I knew meant she thought she knew something we didn't. Afraid I'm going to woo your ex. Wow. Wait, Leo is our... Wait, Leo's our... Wait, huh? Wait, huh? Wait, 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 Leo's our ex? Wow, okay. Leo's our ex? That's... Oh, okay. Uh, I need to text Ren about that. No, he's sleeping. Uh, I can still text him. Uh, free up storage. Nah, I'm good. Oh, Jen's going all out. The model flushes under the fur, but that only seems to be deciding things for Leo. A confident smile replaces a sheepish one from before. Oh yeah? He flexes his shoulders and sticks out the stuffed unicorn to me. I stuff the last of the crust into my mouth and reach out to take it. Jenna does the same thing and now I'm hugging two massive stuffed animals to my sides, tripling my girth. Alright, let's do this. Step right up, test your strength. Three dollars, three tries. Ring the bell, win a prize. I think I did pretty good on that. I'd like to, I'd like to try. Ah, uh, we have a taker. Big strong wolf like you would have no problem at all. Three dollars, please. Leo hands over the money and Carney hands him a mallet. Leo points at me with a grin. This one's for you, this one's for you, Chula. Uh, did I say that right, Chula? This one's for you, Chula. Art skips a beat. He hasn't called me that in a while. I decided to play along. Don't disappoint me, Leo. I really want that stuff, Grifo. <laughs> I pointed to the Grifo on the on Carney's long shelf of toys. Sure thing. Leo spreads his legs, squares his shoulders before raising the hammer and bringing it down hard onto the rubble, rubber looking pad. It's a pretty hard hit, but. The chaser only raised it up to the 40 mark? Ooh, almost, sir. Try again. Leo's brows furrows, and now I'm not too sure this was a good idea. Oh, shit, yeah. Raises the mal up again, grunts as he brings it down even harder, causing the contraption to shake a little. This time, the chaser shoots up to the 70 mark. Even better this time. Put your back into it. I can hear Leo growling a little as he raises the mal up and brings it down with a snarl. All the muscles in his arms standing out. I'm pretty sure I felt the ground shaking this time as the impact causes more than a few heads to turn. This time the chaser only goes up to 60. <laughs> Little gas at the game. So close. Three more dollars will get you three more tries. Would you like to try again? Nope. My turn. Jenna already has her money ready and hands it to Carney. Oh, a little battle between the sexes, eh? Well, step right up, my fair fox maiden. How will you fare against a big bad wolf? Leo reluctantly hands the mallet to Jenna. All right, B70. Jenna points the mallet at me, winking. Don't worry, Chase. I'll get that gryphone for you. Leo snorts loudly, folding his arms, looking up pretty annoyed. Good luck. I was hitting that thing as... Before you can finish, Jenna raises the mallet into the air and puts it a graceful swing. It's actually sewer chopping wood, and she brings it down hard onto the rubber pad. 
The lines pretty precisely and cleanly with a sharp contrast Leo slop with Leo's sloppy hits. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Yo, Jenna, you are tough as shit, girl. Damn. I stare. Leo stares. The Cardi stares. Jenna simply raises her paw in the air. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Jenna did it though. Congrats, Jenna. A few onlookers around us laugh and cheer. Oh my! The fox, the fair fox has won. Come over and pick your prize. He glances at Leah. Sorry, buddy. The feline shoots a sim, sim, uh, sympathetic but also amused smile Leo's way before turning to onlookers. See that? A female fox half the size of this male wolf has rung the bell. Could you be? Could one of you be next? Leo looks mortified, but quickly changes his expression to a sheepish grin. He doesn't seem to want to look at me. Uh, good job, Jenna. Jenna bounced back, carrying the big stuffed Gryfo. Give, give those ones to Leo so I could give you this. I hand off the stuffed toys to Leo, who grumbles a bit as he takes them. Damn thing's rigged. Jenna hands me the Gryfo. Thanks, Jenna. That was really... She leans over and pecks me on the cheek. I see Leo's eyes widen as she does, his ears standing up straight. Ah, I was nothing. Leo stands there for a few more seconds, working his jaw. Awesome. He turns away and, and leaves, his arms still wrapped around the giant stuffed toys. Jenna starts laughing. Jenna? Oh, hush, he'll get over it. He's just so damn fun to tease. I have to agree, but not when I'm being used to the teasing. He's still really sensitive about the whole thing. You guys talked it over, didn't you? Anyways, aren't you gay? <laughs> I, I hate that question so much, bro. I, this is a question I genuinely hate getting asked. Okay, story, st short story time. When I'm, in, when I'm in school, and when I'm in school, uh, I always get comments from people being like, being like, are you gay? And I, and I always stare at them and either I just give a, a straight up lie or I just don't answer at all because it's like, who's going to start a conversation with, are you gay? Like that happened to me so many times. Like I, like this one girl in my chorus class, I have never spoken to this bitch before and she's like, and she's like, quick question, are you gay? And in my mind, I'm like, out of all the things we were doing in this class, why, what brought you to say that? People say it's because of my voice, which honestly I could get. <laughs> you guys talked it over, didn't you? Anyways, anyway, aren't you gay? I take a deep breath. Yes, I'm gay, no, I'm bi. Nah, guys, I'm fucking gay. Yeah. I think that I think this route is if like we're doing Jenna's route, maybe. I don't know. Yes, I'm gay. Yeah. See, he's got nothing to worry. What the fuck? Did my computer crash? Oh, okay, so uh, my computer almost crashed. Cool, I love when that stuff happens, you know? He's got nothing to worry about. I'm not in the mood to go in deep about my sexuality. <laughs> Saying anything else confuses people. I saw and rub my eyes with my paw, still a little tired. Hey, don't tell Leo I worked at that state fair every year. <laughs> don't tell Leo that I worked at that state fair every year. Wasn't planning on it. The rest of the day was pretty relaxing. We ride a few, few of the more mellow rides. Leo seemed to cheer up when I volunteered to sit next to him on, on the Ferris wheel. DJ even built his courage to the point where he rode the swinging ship. Lynn and Carl rode the slingshot ride together, and with video feed from the ground, I think it's the first time I've ever seen Flynn scared. 
Carl did end up barfing after that one. By about 6 p.m., everyone was tired enough that we agreed to head back. I'm so exhausted, so I sleep for half an hour. It takes back it, the half hour it takes to get back to the motel. When we did go back, I noticed how good the sun looks right now. With the sky, I remind myself that I'm here to actually get a project done, not just play around. So as soon as everyone in the motel Sits in the motel, I let them know I'm about to shoot up some B-roll, gathering up my equipment and heading out into the heat. Dragging outside, I set up, uh, I set it up, sweating even under the evening light. Even this late in the day, the heat was pissing me off. For some reason, it's a lot cooler in Pueblo. Pueblo? I don't know. My mind drifts back to the many days of summer under the blazing sun. Temperature rarely dipping below 100. I'm amazed poor TJ never had a heat stroke. When I pull my eyes to the viewfinder, I'm a bit disappointed on how broken down the town looks, even with the amazing backdrop. What a dump. I'll say. It's then that I hear footsteps and talking behind me. I pause my recording and turn around. How's the filming? It's alright. Kinda ran out of sun, but it's okay. Echo looks like crap no matter what kind of lighting you shoot it in. You need us to keep quiet? Nah, I'm just shooting a B-roll. Was just about to come back in. Let's stay out. Let's stay out here a minute. Carl and Flynn are getting a little loud. Besides, I want to talk to you two. Grabs an arm around Jenna and reaches out the other to pull me in so that we're both flanking him. I feel my shoulder press into the warm bulk of his side and chest. He'd always been taller than me. My eyes barely came up to his chin, but now it seemed like he was almost twice as wide. He definitely put on more muscles since last I saw him. Well, that was always, while he was always pretty muscular, he'd been more on the lean side. Now his chest and biceps pull his shirt together, pull his shirt tight. It felt nice, though like something very sturdy wrapped in velvet. I suppose it was a mixture of adding on both muscle and fat. At least I'm happy to see that he's gotten over his little defeat to Jenna. Look at us, OG crew. Leo's, Leo's voice, Leo's strong voice vibrates from his body onto mine, the effect tranquilizing after the muscles relax. Together again. The only thing I miss about, the only thing I miss about this town. Leo was just referring to the fact that he, Jenna, and I were original, were the original three in the group of the six becoming friends. Oh, that's cool. Later, we would add TJ, then Carl, and then finally Flynn, and Sydney. Flynn and Sydney. Leo had had been the one to reunite us all. I remember when we first got here, everyone was afraid of you. <laughs> I remember when I first got here, I found a bunch of gringos who who wouldn't even talk to each other. We all went to the same schools in Peyton and had our different friends there. When Leo moved in, he thought it was strange that the kids in Echo didn't hang out together. As I entered middle school and high school, I cycled through a ton of different friends, but the one in Echo has always stayed the same. Remember when we always had those sleepovers at Chase's place? Of course, I kicked your ass in Claws of Fury all the time. I remember, I used to think you guys were only friends with me for my video games. Many times I've fallen asleep to the flickering of the old CRT television set watching the outlines of Jenna and Leo Twist side to side as they play. I would wake up hours later to only find them still playing. It was weird. Jenna and Leo get along really well, but there's a bit of competitive streak between the two. Actually, it's one of the few things that gets Leo genuinely angry. I think I've even I think he's even broken one of my controllers once. How long has it been since we first met? Well, when did you move in? Uh, I think it was in 2000. So take 2015, subtract 2000. What does that leave you with, Leo? Leo looks sideways at me and smirks. There's a flash of a white canine as it appears from under his lip for a moment. You think you think yourself a real hot shot now, now that you're in college, eh? I smirk back, though I know my canines aren't as impressive. Pretty much, yeah. Well, you still always be those little brats to me. Feels Leo, I feel Leo's wagging tail. I feel Leo's wagging tail swat me in the butt. I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Speaking of which, are you two getting along over there? Jenna looks at me around Leo's broad chest. Yeah, sort of. 
Yeah, we haven't had much chances to hang out. Eh, why not? Well, it's college. It's also a pretty large university. I don't even think we've ever seen each other in the passing. Yeah, things are different. But Jenna, we should do something together before you graduate. Definitely. Leo still looks a little disappointed that me and Jenna aren't keeping up with the university, but I don't know why. She had her friends, I had mine, and we did talk sometimes. Jenna nudges into Leo causing all of us to sway. And speaking of that, when are you getting back when are you getting back to Mesa? Mesa is the community college in Peyton. In Peyton. Leo went there for a few semesters before taking a break. And by break, I mean he quit. We'll see. I have to talk to my parents. It's just starting to get real busy. Why don't they hire more people? You know, you would have graduated by now. You would have to have your master's by now. Leo says, it's about committing to the family business, uh, not the help that he needs. Jenna rolls her eyes, blowing off some air and ruffling the tough the fur on her head. Wolves and their families. You should try thinking and speaking for yourself sometimes. If I hadn't done that, I'd be stuck in that crank, in that crank house. Jenna flicks her head vaguely in the direction of where she used to live in. Jenna's the only one aside from Carl who has family still living in Echo. I wonder if she's going to visit them, even though I'm pretty sure I already know the answer to that. I see Leo tightening his arms around her shoulders, but she goes on without missing a beat. And you can even start with the with and you can start out and you can start with our otter here. I look up and caught and caught on awareness. Huh? What? Jenna. I'm serious. Jenna puts her paw up to Leo's face, cutting him off. I am not going to spend this entire week with you asking me when or how you should do it. Let's rip off the band-aid now. Chase? Jenna. There's a warning tone in Leo's voice as he pinned back his ears, dropping his arms from our shoulders. I already know what's happening. It's been a long time coming. I take a step back and unfold my arms, looking to the side. Chase, Leo has some things to say to you. And yes, it's about that. Now, I'm going to head back and make sure Carl didn't light up the bathroom. Jenna! His tone changes to exasperation as Jenna turns her heel over and leaves. Judging by the curl in her tail, I can tell she's pretty satisfied with how she's done. Returning my attention to the road, I couldn't really bring myself to look at him right now. We both stand there for a minute, three feet apart. I hear Leo scuff the ground with his foot and then sniff as dust raises up from the ground. I hear him draw a breath a few times as if he's going to say something but ends up blowing it out with a sigh. We were never good at this. Probably why it ended up failing just like it did. Oh. Leo. I'm sorry, Chase. For what? Oh, the music started. I'm not talking to you about this when I should have. Talking to Jenna about it when I should have been talking to you. I reach out and set a paw, and he reached out and set a paw on my shoulder, a silver anchor on his wrist glistening a bit in the fading light. He's smiling at me, but I grit my teeth. Why are you still wearing that? I. His eyes flick from the bracelet and back to my face, expression turning defensive. Why aren't you still wearing yours? Don't you remember what we said? I sigh looking at this scattering of clouds behind Leo's hand. They're tinged, they're tinged a soft pink from the fading sun. The sense that almost has the same color as Leo's fur. Oh, shit. Leo, we were teenagers. That's not an answer. He cuts me off and I look back at him. I told you, they weren't love bracelets. They were just about our relationship. They were about everything. Our friends, family, memories, echo. I raised my voice above his, cutting him off this time. They were about echo, Leo. We stand there a while, and Leo looking closely at me, expecting his, expectantly his ears tip forward. His eyes pierce me like an amber, like amber shards. They're always 
It, always, it was always hard to look at him in the eye during our arguments. This is... What? Do... What? Do I have to say it? Alright. Fine. I fucking hate this place. Everything about it. It's the most miserable goddamn place I've ever been. How many places have you even been? Enough to know that it's miserable. Most people here... Here's old. Obsessed on... Welfare. Half of them are probably on meth. Leo puts a deep breath and blows it over my head. I can smell the bell pepper on his breath. No one likes it here, Chase. I mean, it was an anchor. I'm half laughing. Just looking at it made me feel like I was still tied to this town. It didn't need to remind me of all that awful stuff. I know it was supposed to be a symbolize of our, uh, our being each other's rocks or whatever but it stands for more than that but a lot of good things happened here too no one should forget where they came from sometimes i wish i could at this point uh leo's deflated a bit going into a slouch his ears lowered wait you said was you didn't you didn't get rid no no, I still have it. It's just in a drawer in my dorm room. Honestly, if it was anything else, like one of those infinity bracelets we saw, I wouldn't have trouble wearing it. Oh fuck, why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you say anything when we were buying them? I didn't know it was going to be a problem. It takes a deep breath again before blowing it out, puffing out his cheeks this time. I do not know how to pronounce that. Hold on one sec, guys. I'm gonna get the damn Google Translate out. Translate. Hold on. I need a. I need to see how you say this. Puchika. Puchika, Otter. Puchika. Puchika, guys. The pot to his eye and holds it there for a few seconds. It's a pose I'm pretty familiar with. Even though I haven't seen it in a few years, I'm hit with waves of memories. Mostly of me frustrating or embarrassing Leo somehow. Alright, uh, I'm back. I had to uh, restart my computer, guys. So uh, yeah, the video's probably the video probably cut there, but uh, we're back. Don't worry. You, we're probably gonna show see that little thing show up. That's been showing up all the time. I like open my computer, so I don't have any control over that. So if it does show up, I apologize, guys. Even though I haven't seen it in a few years, I've hit with a wave of memories. Mostly me frustrating or embarrassing Leo somehow. I decided on the anchors mostly because they were looking pretty. They looked pretty. Leo had referenced some wolf metaphor about roots and how we're always drawn back to them. Also some bullshit about how otters were great at, were great sailors. But really, it was just the aesthetic. For some reason, over the years, I began to associate the anchor with being stuck in Echo. It was when I started connecting the anchor to Sydney that I'd taken it off. It was too much. Anyway, Leo brings me back to the present and I focus back on him. What I'm trying to say is that I'm still not okay with how you left. Leo, I said I was sorry and I still am. Or you stopped talking to me for a while. I. Okay, I was a kid. I thought I had a good tactic. Like Jenna said, rip off the band-aid, you know? We did start talking again. It was more like you punching me in the gut and then kicking me in the balls. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it's supposed to be like a serious moment, but... 
<laughs> I'm so fucking amateur, bro. The problem was that you didn't even give me a chance to say anything. Or at least tell me why before you broke it off. I say silent for a while, then fun. Oh, yeah, there it is, guys. Yeah, see, I don't know what this thing is. Like I said, I was young and dumb. I didn't know how to handle it. We have a goatee, I just realized. Oh, no, that's a shadow. It's never mind. I can keep apologizing or we can move on and make the most of this. We only have one week. And I want to have fun. Bill looks to the side, paws on his hips as if he was contemplating, then looks back at me with a smile. All right, fine. But don't think you're off the hook. I still want to talk soon. Soon, just not right now. I stand there awkwardly for a few moments. Then, because I feel, because it feels appropriate, I step in to give him a hug. It takes it. He takes it willingly, and his warm, and he's warm and strong. For a moment, I wonder why the hell I dumped this guy. Then some guy lays a horn as they drive past us, playing. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, that has to be the most randomest shit I have seen. <laughs> I leave back so I can watch the car speed down the empty road. Leo keeps holding me, though he just chuckles. <laughs> Echo hasn't changed much, has it? Oh, yeah, no, definitely. No, 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 that's not fucking Echo. That's New York. <laughs> that's New York, guys. Oh, uh, thank God for Florida. No, I think Florida's just as worse as New York. No, it hasn't. As we were saying our goodbyes, I remember Leo. I remind Leo about the shots I need of the lake. He says he'll talk to the other two about it after they leave. We say our goodbyes before Leo, Carl, and Finn take off. TJ takes his usual hour getting ready for bed while Jenna does some schoolwork. By the time I'm finished brushing my teeth, I'm grateful to see them both in bed. I get under the covers next to TJ and lay there for about an hour staring at the ceiling. Slowly, I slid from under the covers, careful not to wake TJ. Quietly, I slip my jeans on, grab my jacket before heading out the door. What? Toby built Toby built to a small sand castle next to the lake in the process of digging a moat around it. Jenna drops a few twigs next to it before running off to find more decorations. Flynn is talking to Sydney, pointing at Toby's sand castle. Sydney looks hes hesitant but excited. He seems to make up his mind, suddenly running forward and kicking the top of the tallest castle. It breaks easily with most of it flying to Toby's face. Toby flinches back, shocked, before immediately crying as he rubs his eyes. Jenna comes running from across the beach, yelling before shoving Sydney at it, who's laughing. She turns to Toby, trying to help him clean his face, but the lynx pushes her away before running towards the trail back to Echo. What? I'm confused. Monday. So we only got a week. Yeehaw. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeehaw River feeds Emma Lake from the north. It's a further drive than the lake itself, but it does have a few nice clearings along its edge. One of them has a few benches and a rush to hell public grill that I'm sure no one has used in decades. This is the place that we go. As we're unloading Leo's van, I decided to get the B-roll of the lake right away. It won't have much of a presence in the packet, so I, I think I'm going to narrate over it later. Natural Lake is only a few, a few minutes walk from here. <sighs> Sorry guys, I'm currently recording this at like almost 3 a.m. It's a bit difficult nav navigating around the side push. And now I'm gonna have to check for ticks later. By the time I reach the lake, my friends are pretty far behind me, hidden behind a few bends and hills. I'm getting uncomfortable with the idea of me holding this camera while I navigate this train. It probably would have been better if Leo had just parked the car next to the reservoir while I got out to film. 
But I guess even that wasn't still okay. There's a large square of paved ground next to the parking lot. Now several branches and rows of brand new grills. Several lamps have been eradicated, eradicated around the area too. Leo was right about this town trying to turn the reservoir into a recreational spot. I can actually feel I can actually see a few jet boats skimming through the waters, leaving long trails of white behind them. There's even one that looks like a feline of some sort fishing in the shallows. That would explain why the motel is still in business. Lake Emma is fairly small and about twelve miles along long and five wide. I look around before climbing to the top of the nearby hill to, and getting my shots. Even with few people there, it's still pretty quiet, aside from the terrain, from the train horns, and it's still kind of eerie. I wrap around and start quickly make my way back. I start to explain why I'm getting freaked out in broad daylight with people around. Either it's because of what happened all those years ago, or I'm just physically, or I'm just psyching myself out. I'm glad to hear my friend's voice again as I get closer. Then again, it sounds like they're fighting. Been acting like a dick all day. Be glad I came here at all. Apparently, it would have been better if you hadn't. Maybe I should just fucking leave then. Sounds like a lot more serious than our usual squabbles, so I quicken my pace. They seem to quiet down a bit once they see me coming. Peter's off to the side looking over the river, occasionally throwing a rock into it. Carl sits in a lawn chair, one of the six that had been set out in a semicircle. He had his chin on his fist, lazily stares at me. Ken and Leah both stand next to each other, looking at Flynn, who's got his back turned, rummaging through the gore. Hey, what's wrong? Leo sighs. Nothing. You got your film? Uh, yeah, about it. The silence is still awkward, and I have no idea what the hell to do with myself. I finally realized that I'm still holding the camera, and decided to put that away. Hey, uh, I'm gonna go for a quick swim. Haven't been in the water in a while. When I was the first... When we first got here, I was completely disappointed to find that the motel didn't have its own swimming pool. Being an otter, I usually like to swim at least once a day, if not more. It's been, it's been three days and I'm feeling angsty as hell for it. Flynn finally turns around with a beer in his hand and he cracks it open. I'm sure that he's been acting a bit strange today. He'd held this entire trip by a few hours and when he finally showed up, his eyes were bleary and his eyes are bleary and he seemed sluggish like he'd been up all night when we asked if he was all right he brushed us off yeah thanks for the help setting up chase you're about as useful as this fat ass here he swings the pot holding a beer at car flynn so enjoy the swim while i set everything out yeah i will make my soda a diet while you're at it I've, I've had it with Flynn. He's souring up the trip with his need to be an asshole. Go fuck yourself. I ignore him as I strip off my shirt and head into the riverbank. I pat TJ on the shoulder as I pass him before slipping into the water. We're currently in the middle of a drought that's been lasting past three years, so the water is low, only about 10 feet at its deepest. It's enough that, it's enough though, and God, it feels good. It's spring, so the water is pretty cold. I swim back and forth a few times before finally diving in. Whoa. Can I just say how amazing this artwork is, by the way? Like, all the artwork and all this in this visual novel is amazing. Like, oh my god, I love it. Eventually, I settle on drifting to the bottom, laying and grabbing on the rocky floor as I stare up at the shimmering light above me. I feel a gentle current running over my body. We weren't otters, so can we drown? I don't think we could drown. It's nice to be away from all the tension above me. I felt isolated, alone, and for now, it feels good. Only I could really come down this deep. The others not being able to hold their breaths as long, or being too little. I remember when we were younger, how I'd give the others rides around the lake, and being able to swim for nearly half a mile and back. Even Flynn, the asshole, had done it a few times. It was one skill that I had that I was proud of, even if it was inherent to my species. It still made me somehow useful, or at least different from everyone else, in a good way. I had always felt like the odd one out in the group, 
as strange as it sounds. Where everyone else had a strong distance personality, I was just average. Sometimes I wonder if they really were just friends with me because all because we all had to be when we were younger. This whole trip kind of forced me to think back on all the memories I had of the place and my friends. They're always doing cool things, being different while I had to sort of blend it into the background. Even when I wanted to do something to stand out somehow. That's that's what I'm trying to do here, I guess. It's been about seven minutes, and I only knew that because that's how as long as I can hold my breath. I decided I should go, oh, okay, no, so we can drive. I decided I should go back up and help out, so I slowly let myself float back up towards the surface, trying to stay up in the same spot. My, my surface, it's pretty quiet. For a second, I wonder if everyone was just gone. Of course, that's ridiculous, as I came over the, em the embankment, everyone's there. Predictable, Flynn didn't get my didn't get my food out, so I go to the cooler, grab a sandwich and soda before sitting in an empty chair next to Leo. Apparently, it was a good idea to bring long chairs, considering the tables looked like they were covered with a year's worth of bird shit. How's this wound? His tone bitter and salty. It's not he's not in the usual grumpy, but good natured mood. He's genuinely unhappy. What the hell was his deal? Amazing. I'm gonna, amazing. I'm gonna have to come back here again sometime during this week. You lizard people don't understand. You hardly need water. It always scares the hell out of me when you're down there that long. I'm built for it. Remember when you said you give us rides? That was fun. Remember when you always scream like a girl when Chase would go out, would go out, for, out too far out? Oh, wow. I remember that now. Hey, I never really liked that water. Anyways, Chase, anyways, Chase, would you do it on purpose? He knew I didn't like it to a certain point. Carl looks at me. You know what I would... You know what was really cool was when you take us down for a dive. Oh, yeah. Chase was like our own little submarine. I'm starting to get that. Otters are swimming clowns vibe again. Still kind of enjoy... I still kind of enjoy the attention. We need get you to take us to the bottom so we could look for our treasure. We all makes air quotes around the last word. And you know we probably would have found way more stuff if you guys hadn't been dragging me down. I remember when... Are we really fucking talking about this? Are you fucking kidding me, Flynn? Shut the fuck up! Everyone turns to look at Finn. His voice is low and dangerous. They're chilling the air because we all know what he meant. I was actually feeling pretty good about it at this point. Like we crossed the bridge being able to talk about it for once. Apparently, we had it. Flynn. No, I'm serious. Do you think it's okay to fucking talk about this when the lake is just a quarter mile that way? You know what, Flynn? I think we should. Isn't that part of the reason why we're here? No! If that were the case, we'd be over there! But we're all here, and why is that? Everyone was quiet for a moment, and I see TJ shrink into the chair, staring hard at his lap. Flynn, we came here because Chase needed footage. A change comes over Flynn, and his face darkens, and everyone senses it. Flynn turns to me, and it takes some effort not to flinch back. Yeah, and why is that, Chase? You're gonna put that in your fucking documentary? No, I, I, Emma Lake is important. Part of Echo's history. I just. Just what? Flynn raises an eyebrow ridge at me, and I finally just lower my eyes. This is a stupid fucking idea. You know what, Flynn? If you'd be a little more open to tell us what's on your mind, we'd be able to avoid a lot of this kind of stuff. Oh, you want to know what's on my mind? Flynn swivels and marches up to Carl. All right, let's start with you. You fat, lazy, no motivation, no fit future. What the hell are you planning on doing with your life? See here and waste away an echo, munching off your parents until you're dead? Carl stares back up at Flynn impassively, though he hunches on himself a bit further. Flynn, don't you do this right now. And you, thinking you're better than everybody else, I can tell you think everyone in echo is trash. Just because me and the others haven't left, you think we're lower than you. Just because we don't have an education, we're a bunch of retards. 
Yeah? Well, you left with your whole fucking family behind without even saying goodbye. You know what it's like going on with them? You know what's even going on with them right now? What they're dealing with? Yeah, real fucking hero you are. You think I... Stop it, Flynn. Uh, our unquestionable leader. We wouldn't have been friends without you, would we? That's why you brought us here, right? So we can all bond? Or wait, was it because you wanted to get into Chase's pan- Oh shit, no, now Flynn's getting personal. Leo's ears fall flat. Probably, you've been a mess ever since he left, so let me be the one to tell you. It's over. It's fucking unhealthy you're obsessed with him. Slowly his head turns to me and I brace myself. And I can't imagine why. You, Chase, have been the personality of a fucking rock. I wish you could see yourself. You just sit there like a creep watching everyone weigh everything that we say. And don't think I haven't caught the way you stare at all of us when we're like we're all objects to be collected. What are you planning to cycle through all of us for sex? Sure seems like it. Then stops and then exhales and then it looks like it's over. I really, he didn't talk about TJ yet. That proves futile so Flynn turns slowly on. Oh, okay, I have to, have to say something. Yeah, we had, I had silently prayed that the links would make a run for it while Flynn had all his attention focused on us. But it looked like, but TJ looks up at, Pathetic. Like a statue. Like there's no soul in him. Then pauses though as if he has a lot for what he has to say. Finally. What happened, TJ? Flynn? Leo stands up in front of posture and I can tell the wolf is ready to fight. Memories are starting to flow back to TJ. F Flynn thinking he'd done something. Something to sending up as well. Flynn may sound like a hard ass, but physically Leo had him beat easily. Flynn can obviously tell him that he might have to fight on, have a fight on his hands, though it's clear he doesn't want that. He drops his shoulder, seeming to shrink as if invisible strings that had been holding him up were cut. He turns and then gestures at TJ. I just want the truth. Can we put a stop to this today right now? I don't think you know how much of a nightmare it has been for me. Not really knowing, TJ. TJ stares at Flynn, muzzles him grimly. What happened to Sydney? It's dead quiet as TJ stares at his lap, not moving. Come on, let's... Flynn holds up his hand towards me, still staring at TJ. Slowly, TJ looks up, his face still stone, still made of stone. I already told you what happened. Bullshit. Flynn steps forward, but Leo's there to grab the back of Flynn's shirt, swinging him around. Dodge out of the way, Flynn is flung back to land on his ass, kicking up a big cloud of dust. Shit! Flynn, I swear to God, if you start a fight here, I'll drop your stupid ass. Everyone except TJ is standing now, staring at Flynn. Flynn is still sits there, glaring up at Leo, obviously weighing his chances. He seems to come up short, though as he splits to the side and stands up, brushing off his pants as he turns away. You're all with K of not knowing? Fuck all of you. He turns back around, hands in his pockets, bitter look on his face. This whole thing was stupid, Leo. We're not even friends anymore. Flynn scuffs the ground before turning and walking towards the trail that goes back to Echo. God damn it, Flynn! Fuck off! Flynn keeps walking, it's pretty clear that he isn't coming back. I raise a paw and rub it over my eyes. What's he doing? He's the passionate guy that will sometimes just explode with all this, his insecurities before running away and hiding for a few days. He's skewered us all like that before. That was classic fun. He was exception. He was especially mean, dark. And with the part, and the part with TJ, I vaguely remember Flynn having some sort of suspicion. That had been a long time ago. Had he been sitting on that for the whole time? Look to the left and see that TJ's gone. Carl's sitting down, but now it just looks like he's pulling out a joint. Leo's walking down another trail, cursing while Jenna follows him. I stand there next to my chair, undecided. Find TJ, go after Flynn, follow Le Jenna and Leo. Oh my god! Uh, this is a predicament. Uh...
this is a big predicament we got here, guys. So, uh, what I think I'm gonna do is... Sit with Carl, follow Jenna and Leo, go after Flynn, find TJ. Ooh, is this, okay, now the question is, does this determine like what type of route we're doing? That's what I'm confused about. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end the video here. I need you guys to tell me in the comment section, does this affect the type of route we're going in? Because if it affects the route, I'm going to go after Jenna and Leo. But if it doesn't, then I'm going to go find TJ. So yeah, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So thank you guys for watching the video. Comment down below, uh, does this affect the route I do? And if it does, we're following Jenna and Leo in the next episode. If it doesn't, we're just going to go find TJ. Because I'm not going after Flynn and Carl... Uh, I'm, uh, now I'm confused. Okay, all right. I'm going to end the episode here, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in with me today. Have a fantastic night. I am going to go to bed because it's 3 a.m. See you guys later.